Good afternoon, Kellen Williams, Marty Miller with Summit Property Group, coming back to you with another command training video for Keller Williams on goals. Uh, Keller Williams just released the newest applet uh, under the reports submenu and also here underneath our home screen of our actual goals, our goals versus our actual production, if you will. So when you first log in to KW Command, you'll see this on your home screen. If you have not set your goals, you can come in and click on set them now. Also in the future, once you have set them, you can always come in here to reports and you'll see at the top, you have your dashboard, your reports, and then your goals. You can click there and come to goal settings and set them here as well. So either way. So let's go ahead and click on set them now so we can begin setting our goals. This is going to take us into the Kelly guide for goal setting. So I can come down to the bottom and click on get started. Next, it's gonna ask me what year am I setting for? Right now, we can only build out 2020, so we'll set that. Next, it's going to walk us through our annual profit goal, commission, operating expenses, cost of sales, and then our balance of business, listings versus buyers. So most of the new agents that I start off talking with when they first join real estate are looking to make at least $100,000. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that as our example today. Um, average commission listed here at $71.50. I think that's based upon the average sales price of homes in the U.S. Um, I will say that our sales price in our market center, it's about $275. So um, I'm going to go ahead and adjust that higher just so it can be a little closer, at least for my market. And of course, you're going to adjust that based upon your market. So I'm going to put that in at $82.50. And then next, it's going to get into operating expenses and cost of sales. You can see these eyes next to each one of these. It's great to hover over these. Um, essentially, it says, what's your annual profit goal? I will say this profit goal does not include taxes. So just one to think about. Um, this is the amount of profit your business can earn before taxes, after subtracting cost of sales and operating expenses from your GCI. So it's somewhere between gross and net and that it doesn't include taxes, but still pretty close. Average commission, obviously the average amount of commission you earn. Operating expenses, those are kind of um, almost fixed costs, if you will. Expenses that are made whether or not a transaction takes place. So example, salaries, most lead generation and marketing expenses, education, occupancy, automobile expenses. Um, you know, I think like licensing fees and desk fees and those types of things as well. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put that in at $1,000 a month. So that would be $12,000 total. Now that may depend, differ depending on your market, how much you're spending on lead generation, etc. Next, you're going to have cost of sales. And so those are expenses that are only made when a transaction takes place. So you can see example splits to agents, transaction coordinator, ISAs, market center brokerage fees, as well as referral fees and other transaction dependent expenses. Um, so basically you might think about, okay, what's my cap? What's my royalty? Do I have a coaching fee that I need to pay? Am I paying a transaction coordinator? And then you might think of some marketing expenses that are based purely on your transactions. So I think of things like photography and staging and um, closing gifts, those types of things. So I think annually, if I put all of that together and kind of have a real good guess based upon my cap, et cetera, I'm most likely going to put that at somewhere between twenty-five and thirty thousand. I'm just going to err on the high side and put my cost of sale at thirty thousand. Next, you have your balance of business. You can see that's the balance between sellers and buyers in your business. It defaults to fifty-fifty. I see typically with newer agents that I work with, a lot of times they're a little bit heavier on buyers, at least for that first year, and then hopefully shift to being a little bit heavier on listings should they decide to follow that path. But for right now, we'll go ahead and leave it at fifty-fifty. Next, we click on save and continue, and it's going to take us into our conversion rate for our activities. So this is the part that um, I've seen online has kind of tripped up a few people, and there's also one small glitch. So we're going to talk about that. But first, you can see if you hover over cold, uh, goal conversion rates, the rate in which you are turning leads into clients. So really, we start off the actions you are taking to capture leads. I think of that as in, okay, so if I do 100 door knocks, how many people are going to answer the door? If I make 100 phone calls today um, and they're cold calls, how many might be a lead? If I send out 100 flyers, how many responses might I get back? 
if I run a hundred Facebook ads or maybe I get a hundred Facebook ad impressions, how many of those turn into uh, clicks and then leads? I would say that that activity rate should be pretty low um, depending on which avenue you're following, uh, what your lead gen lever is, but I'm good with leaving that at 3% for right now. If you're strictly doing internet-based lead generation, it's probably gonna be even lower. If you're working spheres, past clients, uh, referrals, then obviously it'll be higher. And then of course, if you're doing things like open houses or expireds or for sale by owners, it might be somewhere in the middle there. So we're gonna leave it at 3% for right now. Next, it says, what's the conversion rate of the number of leads that you get that turn into actual contacts? So I think about that as, okay, so I have a um, hundred names and phone numbers for expired that expired yesterday. If I call 100 of those, how many of those are actually going to answer where I can have a decent conversation and then put them in my database for future follow-up? Um, if I get a hundred people who click on my Facebook ad, how many of those will actually turn into contacts that have good phone numbers and good emails that I can actually get a hold of and start a conversation with? Right now, they have that at 10%. Um, I might think that might be a little bit higher. It kind of depends on where those leads are coming from, but we'll leave it right now there just for the uh, sample purposes. Next, it says, okay, so you have put these contacts into your database. How many of these contacts are now going to turn into appointments set? So it basically says, you know, if you're putting contacts into your database, you should have the opportunity to set appointments with at least 60% of those. Next, you can see it moves to appointments. Okay, so I've scheduled meetings with a prospective client. How many of them actually keep that appointment? I think 60% is a little bit low there, but typically I confirm my appointments. I, you know, I don't set an appointment unless I'm rather sure that we are uh, good to go. So um, we can just leave it at 60% for the example. It's gonna be different for each person, um, but we'll kind of move forward from there. Next, we have appointments kept. So those that actually uh, meet with you, what percentage of those agree to work with you? So think about it, I went on a selling, a listing appointment, excuse me, and they agree to work with me, so we sign a listing agreement. I have a buyer initial consult, and they agree to work with me, so we sign a buyer's representation agreement. Next, you see agreements to move to under contract. However, there is a small glitch here because you can also see that closed units has a percentage, and there's nothing to move to. You can't go from closed units to anything else. So in order to make the math make sense right now for this small glitch, go ahead and zero out agreements and I'll show you what that looks like in a second. Next, once we get under contract, which is actually gonna to move to agreements. So with regards to listing agreements, how many of those actually go under contract? And we can leave that at 75%. And how many that go under contract actually close? I would hope that would be higher than 75%. And yet we'll just leave that just to kind of show what the model shows. Again, you'll tweak these percentages for your own case. Next, you'll go into save and continue, and then you're gonna start seeing your goals. So on the left-hand side, we've got the breakdown. If I want to net 142,000 before, or excuse me, if I wanna net 100,000 before taxes, then I need to gross 142 before taxes. That factors in my cost of sales plus my expenses plus my profit goal. So that's 100 plus cost of sales plus expenses. Remember that was 30,000 here, 12,000 here, 30 plus 12 is 42. So to make 100, I need to make 142. It lists here my average commission per unit. It's got my goal conversion ratios listed. It then has my listings and my buyers. So if I click on what's next, it's basically gonna say, okay, well now would you like to go ahead and see your report? So let's go to view my goals here in the center and I'll walk you through what that looks like. So it essentially breaks it down into how many activities have to occur in order to capture how many leads, how many leads, right, become contacts, how many contacts become appointments and so on and so forth. So for example, if you hover over the activities, it should, let me see if it's on this screen. Here we go, I'm sorry, it's down here. So if you hover over your activities down here, you can see that it gives you a list of activities that could be um, considered, an, or a list of things that be considered an activity, excuse me. So you've got meetings, calls, emails, texts, smart plans, calendar events, notes, 
searched neighborhood or favorited a listing. All of those are things that can be happening that either you're doing as an activity or your clients doing as an activity that would then lead. So as I look at it, it basically shows me, hey, in order to close 18 units this year, there need to be 47,000 activities happening. Now, again, I don't know exactly what that looks like. And as time goes on, we'll see how true that number holds. Um, but that's basically at a 3% ratio kind of going all the way through the pipeline. If 47,000 activities happen and 3% of those activities lead to creating a, a lead. So let's just think door knocking, right? If I door knock 47,000 doors, how many of them will answer? and will provide me with their information and allow me to then further follow up with them, right? So there's 1,400 possible leads, all right? So I got their phone number and now I'm calling them and they're actually answering, right? They weren't just being nice and giving me a bogus number or something like that, but they actually gave me their number and it's a real number and they answered. Well, great, then I have 142 people answering the phone. I can start turning them into contacts in this situation. From there, of the 142 that answer the phone, 84 say, sure, you can come out to meet with me. I'd love to hear about what my house might be worth. I'm interested in selling. I might be buying, whatever it may be. Based upon the percentages that we put in, those 84 people that agree to meet us, well, only 50 of them are actually going to show up. Now, that's based upon the percentage that we put in. You can tweak those if you find that your appointment set to kept is doing better. Of the 50 appointments that were kept, 30 of them signed agreements. Of the 30 that signed agreements, 22 of them actually went under contract. And of the 22 that went under contract, you can see 18 actually closed. If you do 18 times my, uh, the, excuse me, commission rate that we put in, or the commission total that we put in, 82.50 times 18 is 148.5. And you can see down here, I need to make at least 142 to net 100,000 before taxes. So that's basically how it breaks down. You can kind of see these will go into effect in two months, five days, and seven hours. I can also look at this month versus this year. Um, as I start tracking activities, you can see it starts putting it, well, it breaks it down. So in this month, here's what I need to do. And then my assumption, I haven't seen it happen yet, but my assumption is, is as I start logging activities in 2020, this little speedometer will start filling up. And the same thing with each one of these. So these will all start filling up as I am, you know, using opportunities to put appointments in, uh, as I'm using opportunities to put agreements. This is kind of, kind of be the pipeline side of things on the right, appointment set to the right. And then of course, this will be more of the contact side of things, if you will. So. It's exciting. I'm excited to see how it's going to play out. I think the numbers um, basically make sense. I need to do two closings per month in order to net 100,000 before taxes. If I factor in taxes, I'm probably thinking that's gonna go up to three per month, somewhere in that range. Uh, down here, you can see profit tracker, and that's based upon opportunities, you can see here. Um, and then again, you have all of your activities breakdown, goal conversion rates, and GCI breakdown here at the bottom. So that's essentially it. I would uh, strongly recommend that you get with um, command and kind of start working through your goals. If you're working with a productivity coach or a team leader or a maps coach, um, you know, something along those lines and get in here and set those goals and then share that with somebody that can hold you accountable to them, discuss them with you, make sure that they're on point for what you want to get accomplished. As always, guys, it's a pleasure talking to you and I look forward to talking to you again real soon.